A toast to my dad, John Shakespeare, gentleman at last. <laughs> and anyone who says I ain't, I'll whack him on the bum with me heraldic shield. <gasps> we finally got our coat of arms. I am a pampaloin once more, as I was in the house of my father. No longer the wife of a grotsome old barfing hog, for now I be married to a gentleman. <laughs> I still can't quite believe it. Chief Harold Green swore he'd do anything to deny us. Ah, oh, but that was before the Queen saw my big midsummer donkey gag play. <laughs> she loved it and decreed that only the son of a gentleman could have writ such wit. And thus has she made me posh. But, Master, you've always railed and ranted against how the pampaloins and folder holes are on top in England just because they're posh. Yes, Bottom, but that was before I managed to weasel my way into the club. Now I'm posh myself. I see the English class system is entirely appropriate, my own elevation wholly merited, and those beneath me a bunch of feckless, undeserving oiks. <laughs> Wish I could have been there to see Green's face, but can't risk going out in public. Too many knives sharpened. Too many musket balls in my name on them. Really, kid? I, I knew you were lying a bit low, but you're in real danger. Mortal, mate. The whole spy gig's gone completely puffling pan-shaped. <laughs> the Crown suspects me of being a double agent. My own fault keep getting Pisslington and forgetting which near-identical branch of the same religion we're supposed to hunt down and kill. Well, yes, it is confusing. Which has not gone down well with the God-prodding purity. He's also accused me of being an atheist. I mean, in truth, well, I'm in so much danger, I'll be better off dead. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, up, the girls are back. Sounds like they've had a good time, too. It was good of Kate to take our Sue outside to see you. Well, who better to show her all London's spiritual treasures than a studious, sober, serious-minded girl like Kate? Oh, my giddly goodly Godlingtons! We have bought so much Craplington! <laughs> Look at this brilliant shirting vest, Dad, with a comical motif stitched upon it. <laughs> my friend hath visited London, and all I got hath be this stupid undershirt. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? And look at all these sweet London souvenirs. A little severed head of a traitor on a keychain. A little incinerated Catholic martyr on a keychain. A little rotting plague corpse on a keychain. A little country maid who had journeyed here in search of honest work, but within six weeks has become a toothless, pox-ridden prostitute on a keychain. Yeah, thanks very much, Kate. I think we get the gist. Right, you lot, if you'd like to start packing up, I'm sure Dad's busy. Yes, wife, it is true. I am terribly pushed just now. Mine sublime big donkey gag play has been such a smasheroo that Burbage demands I write another comedy. Yet I have not a comedy comic idea in my head. That's never stopped you before. <laughs> his comedy made you a gentleman. Now, come on, let's get out of his hair. Yeah, what there is of it. Which is, in fact, a lot, daughter. The, the impression of thinning is a, is a trick of the light caused by my unusually shiny scalp. You're bold, son. Own it. I apologise to no man, especially now I'm very, very posh and terribly refined and quite the thing, don't you know? <laughs> Watch out below, don't you know? 